Do you do the test like with blood or do you use it with like uh, DNA? Kids talk a lot. You get things wrong sometimes. But we learn really quick. I'm Lizzie. I like to ask questions. I'm Rachel Gorham, Women's Health Nurse Practitioner at Trios Health. Hi, I'm Lizzie. I'm Rachel. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So I'm here to talk about some tests with you. Yes, so I'm one of the providers in this area that does a specific test, it's called BRCA, um, which BRCA looks for genes that could have been inherited or passed down to somebody that can increase your risk for breast and ovarian cancer. Wow, so what does this test do? So this test looks for two genes. There's two genes that could have been inherited that we know that can increase a woman's risk for breast cancer. So they're called BRCA1 and 2. There are two genes that are located on a specific chromosome. And if you're born with a gene, um, it could be what's called a broken gene. It's a mutated gene. So we know that women that have these gene mutations, they have an increased risk of breast cancer and ovarian cancer because they're born with what we call like a broken gene. It's already defective. So do you do the test like with blood or do you use it with like uh, DNA? It is a type of DNA sampling, yes, but we don't do blood because a lot of people are afraid of needles, right? Yeah. It's kind of scary. So this is a e uh, very easy test. This is what it is, um, but it's way easier than a needle. You know what scope is, right? You brush yes. your teeth, okay. So you swish it in your mouth for 30 seconds and then you just spit it into this vial and we send it to a lab in Utah um, and then they look under their microscopes and they look to see if you have one or two genes. How long does it about take to see if you have the gene? On average, I say about four weeks before you really know if you have this gene or not. So once I test a patient, I always say, let me call you in four weeks and we get your results. Once we have your results, then I have you come in, we sit down and we talk about what we found. Mm -hmm. Now, some insurance companies are um, sending this through a lot quicker and some patients are getting the results as soon as this two weeks. What do you think this costs? So the test can be expensive, however, because this is something that so many women carry, this mutation, we've only identified a very small percentage. General population within the nation, 90% of insurance companies cover this cost. And they looked at my practice and found that all the women that I've tested, 95% um, of them have never paid a penny for the test. So it's good because insurance will cover it um, if you meet criteria for the testing. What age do you think you should come in and see if you have the gene? You know, that we recommend not testing women, preferably till you're 25, because that's when management changes. So say you are positive for this gene, I can't do a whole lot for you until you're 25. Once you're 25 years old, I can change your management, we can start doing things. But until 25, it's kind of that gray area. You know, I have had some patients that have come in and said, I really want to be tested, will you test me? And I have tested those young women because they feel like they really want to know they're mature enough to handle if they're positive or negative. All right, so do you, you think that young, younger children could possibly get the cancer? Absolutely, so say that um, you know somebody who has a BRCA gene. If they have the gene, then they have a 50% chance that, that that person could have passed it down to their, to their child. It's called the autosomal dominant gene. So because it's dominant, we have a 50-50 chance you could have passed it down to one of your children. So what do you think the percentage of women that have the genes are? So they say it's about 1 to 300 to 1 in 500 prevalence that we're going to get a positive gene. So majority of my patients, they are negative. However, it just takes that one person to be positive. So we like to screen everybody who comes into my practice just because it could just take that one person that we just don't screen that could potentially have the gene. We know that right now there's a million women in the nation that have some sort of a GYN cancer. We've only identified 10% of those women that have this BRCA mutation. And then we know that there's 19 million women right now in the nation that have a family history that need to be tested. We've only tested 2%. So we've really only scratched the surface for the number of women that need to have this test done. How do your patients react when they like find out they have the cancer, the gene? Well, if they have the gene, um, you know, for the most part, they actually feel relief that they know that somebody's actually addressed this family history, and now we can move forward. This test isn't for everybody. You know, this is something that you have to have either a personal history of breast ovarian cancer um, or a very specific family history of breast cancer. So kind of the first step is really I tell the patient to gather your family history because once we can actually gather your family history and understand, you know, are you at that increased risk, then we can actually test you and kind of, you know, take it head on and kind of go from there. What uh, what if the 
if the woman, say, does already have the cancer. So if somebody comes to me and they already have breast cancer, I ask them, did your oncologist or has anybody tested you for this gene? And the majority of what I get is no. I haven't been tested for that. So then I test them because then their management might change. So for that woman who has maybe breast cancer in her right breast but doesn't know if she has a gene, I would test her because if she's positive for the gene, she should really have both of her breasts removed and not just one of them removed. So it does kind of change surgical management a little bit as well. So do you know anyone in your family who has had ovarian or breast cancer? In my family? Mm -hmm. Yes, I had quite a few. My aunts and my grandma had it all very young. What about you? Have you had any family history of yes, breast or ovarian cancer? Um, I have one who has had ovarian cancer. And has she been tested for the gene, do you know? I don't think so, mm -hmm. but I probably will talk to her about getting it done. I would think so too, and that's the thing is just awareness. Um, that there's, there's just a lack of awareness in the community that this test is available. So if we can kind of get the word out and know that this test is available, then that will decrease her risk of potentially getting ovarian cancer again um, or potentially getting breast cancer. Say if she had ovarian cancer, um, her ovaries are probably gone. Yes. But if she's positive for the gene, we still haven't evaluated her breast tissue. Her breast tissue can very well still be at risk. So that's why it's really important because some women say they've had breast cancer, they've had their breast removed potentially, but our ovaries are still at risk. So this gene attacks both. So that's why both of them have to be looked at. Thank you for telling me about this test. Oh, yeah. Thank you for coming in. It was great to educate you. Yeah. No problem.